the argumentation always is that in Switzerland and also in Germany or Western Europe countries, the incidence of gastric cancer is relatively low. But we also have to mention that uh, we have a lot of uh, gastric uh, cancers who undergo surgery. And uh, I think lately there was published a study that uh, especially in patients who underwent surgery, gastric cancer, previous endoscopy has been performed. So I think there's also somehow a lack of detection. And uh, that's why uh, we would like to focus now on the stomach. And uh, I would beg uh, Philip to give us a practical approach how we can improve our detection rate of early gastric cancer. Please, Philip. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. Again, uh, this is uh, my honor to be invited uh, and uh, talk about a practical approach to diagnosis of uh, early gastric cancer. Okay, so uh, as uh, Stefan uh, pointed out, um, uh, you can see if, uh, in this uh, WHO figure that 70% uh, of the gastric cancer uh, worldwide uh, occur in the Asia. But however, I think um, there are a big difference in the variation of uh, incidence of uh, gastric cancer in a different part of the country. I will not claim that uh, in Hong Kong we have a high instance. In fact, we don't have a high instance. We probably have a moderate uh, instance of uh, gastric cancer. So how, as an uh, endoscopist, um, how can we contribute to our earlier diagnosis and recognition of this lesion? So uh, I think one of the very important concepts, uh, which I think all of us know, but we, uh, we should il really illustrate is that um, the prognosis of gastric cancer is definitely related to the stage of the diagnosis. And uh, one of the difficulties in recognizing this early lesion is that uh, most of the gas early gastric cancer actually comes and grow from a background of um, uh, 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 pre-malignant changes. For example, um, if, if you can see in this image, there's a chronic uh, gastritis and the background of intestinal metaplasia. Uh, so that makes uh, early gastric cancer hidden within these uh, changes. And also, um, there are only subtle change upon ordinary endoscopy, uh, being changes in the structural and also the vascular pattern. So it's very uncommon that it, uh, early gastric cancer is a polypoid growth. Uh, to overcome this, uh, as an endoscopist, I think we need uh, to pay attention to recognition by paying ample time, uh, enough time, uh, to uh, have an endoscopic examination, and also a careful and meticulous examination with high index of suspicion. And also, we should have an appropriate training in recognizing this early uh, GI cancers. So I think. Uh, uh, earlier on, uh, in a publication uh, from ESG recommendation for upper endoscopy in the year 2001, already there is a uh, quality control recommendation for performance of upper endoscopy so that endoscopists should pay attention to eight positions and take photos uh, around this position during uh, upper endoscopy. And uh, later on, I think recently, there are recommendations about how we should systematically examine the uh, upper GI tract. So one of these uh, publications is actually from Professor Ken Shi Yao. Uh, it's an expert uh, opinion, but uh, when you look at the uh, time frame, then a minimum procedure time of eight minutes should be recommended for upper endoscopy, including two minutes of intubation and reaching the part, uh, second part of duodenum and uh, with uh, cleaning and also plus or minus application of mucolytics and deform, and then four minutes to practice the SSS or systematic uh, screening protocol for uh, stomach, uh, where they have uh, uh, systematically examined stomach in uh, different uh, direction and in different locations, so altogether 22 positions is required, and followed by two minutes of uh, esophageal examination so that uh, we can look into uh, details of this uh, lesion. If time uh, uh, for detection of this lesion is eight minutes, then additional time to should be pay attention to those who are suspicious of the lesion. So how can we recognize early gastric cancer? I think the same principle and the procedure applied uh, as mentioned uh, before uh, in this uh, 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 previous session 
then we have to detect them and then characterize them. So we first recognize this lesion with the white light endoscopy. If we detect any suspicious area, then we'll go into characterizing this area, whether this is neoplastic or non-neoplastic lesion with the current technology of image-enhanced endoscopy. So for example, like uh, the application of uh, one of the technologies, uh, narrow band imaging, which narrow the bandwidth and focus on the mucosal details. So upon uh, a recognition of uh, this uh, lesion, then we look at how do we find and characterize this lesion and what are the features that we have to recognize. And I think uh, in the gastric pathology, uh, we applied the uh, VES classification, uh, which focus on the microvascular pattern and also the uh, microsurface pattern, and uh, also the presence or absence of a demarcation line over the uh, obvious lesion. So before we learn or we know how uh, the uh, normal lesion is, we have to correlate all this uh, with the uh, normal parts and also how would uh, the normal anatomy correlates with the feature that we recognize during endoscopy. So uh, in the uh, uh, anatomy of the corpus mucosa of the stomach, we know that uh, the uh, gastric uh, glandular structure is uh, strict and uh, with a peat pattern opening up and uh, it is also surrounded uh, by a, vas a network of vasculature. So when we look into the narrow band imaging like here, uh, in the center, we recognize that there's a pit opening and in between uh, the network uh, of uh, capillary, then there is a marginal crypt epithelium in between. So this uh, totally correlate with the normal histopathology when we are looking at the uh, granular structure over the uh, corpus uh, mucosa of the stomach. There's a difference in the anatomical arrangement at the uh, pyloric antrum area, where the uh, granular structure now become oblique in the opening. So when we look at the uh, magnifying endoscopy wheel of this uh, mucosa, then we found that uh, the pit is in fact uh, hide hidden within this uh, marginal crib epithelium because the granular structure is now oblique, as you can see from the uh, histopathology. So you can still see this uh, sub uh, epithelial capillary network at the uh, uh, marginal part of this uh, crib epithelium. So this is a magnifying MBI wheel uh, typical for a corpus mucosa of the stomach. You can see um, there are central pit opening and also surrounded by a capillary network. While at the uh, antral pyloric region, uh, you can see that this uh, magnified MBI wheel and uh, you do not see a definite strict uh, pit opening, but because it is an oblique opening. So also we have to recognize what are the uh, background uh, uh, pathophysiology that leads to the development of uh, early gastric cancer through the Cori's cascade. So one of the pre lesion that we always consider will be the intestinal metaplasia from a background of uh, atrophic gastritis. And uh, from this uh, study, we know that the atrophic gastritis, the annual incidence of gastric cancer development will be 0.1%, while when we uh, move into intestinal metaplasia is 0.25, Mild to moderate dysplasia is 0.6%, while severe dysplasia have a 6% uh, annual instance of gastric cancer development. So how do we recognize um, this uh, intestinal metaplasia? So one of the well-reported uh, feature is called the light pool crest sign. So when you look at this uh, magnifying wheel with the MBI image, you can see that there are uh, light pool crest appearance at the marginal part of this uh, epithelial crib. And uh, this uh, gives a sensitivity of 89% and specificity of 95% to recognize intestinal metaplasia. So when we move towards um, early gastric cancer with the application of the microvascular and also the microsurface pattern, then uh, usually we describe this pattern as having whether it's a regular, irregular, or absent of uh, this uh, pattern. And also the presence and absence of a demarcation line is uh, also very important, as uh, you can see in this lesion. So in the lower part at around six o'clock, you can see this uh, a bit uh, prominent uh, creep, but uh, with a uh, presence of a light blue crest sign. So there's a background of uh, IM. But uh, in the central part, uh, there is a irregular uh, microvascular pattern uh, at the background. So 
Um, this is a typical uh, pre uh, diagnosis of uh, early gastric cancer. So as I mentioned, uh, we use this uh, VS classification to uh, characterize uh, early gastric cancer. And uh, the criteria for definition of a high-grade dysplasia or early gastric cancer under magnified endoscopy with MBI will be irregular microvascular pattern or irregular microsurface pattern with a demarcation line. So uh, if you look at uh, this slide, so uh, in the upper part, uh, you can see that uh, there are regular uh, microsurface pattern and uh, also with a regular microvascular pattern and uh, no definite uh, demarcation line, but on the, in the lower part, there is an irregular microvascular pattern in the left uh, lesion, and also irregular uh, microsurface and microvascular pattern in the center, and the irregular microsurface pattern in the uh, right side, and also the white uh, arrow pointed uh, out clearly the demarcation line. So these are indicator for a early gastric cancer. So uh, again, to illustrate the point, well, so uh, in the background mucosa, uh, you may see uh, this uh, roundish uh, area or with ridge or villus or light blue grass sign, but uh, they do not have a demarcation line. But for a carcinoma or early gastric cancer, you can see irregular uh, microvascular pattern, irregular microsurface pattern or like this. So um, this is a, uh, uh, characteristics of a uh, early gastric cancer with a demarcation line. So um, another case to illustrate uh, the same point, so uh, during the white light endoscopy, which we usually practice and perform endoscopy, and uh, we can see that there is an area of increased redness over a background of a mucosa, normal mucosa, and when we look into um, the uh, magnified endoscopy with MBI, we can see that um, there is a uh, Although there's a demarcation line, there's no irregular uh, microvascular or, or microsurface pattern. So this uh, lesion is uh, non-cancerous. So similar appearance on the macroscopic wheel with the white light endoscopy. When we go into the magnifying wheel, you can see that uh, there's a presence of a demarcation line and also a irregular uh, microvascular pattern at the center. So this uh, signified uh, the presence of a early gastric cancer in this lesion. So uh, with the diagnostic performance of uh, magnified endoscopy with uh, MBI after white light endoscopy, the uh, accuracy of recognizing uh, early gastric cancer much increased from 65% uh, to 97% significantly. So I just wanted to uh, illustrate uh, the, this case uh, with a video. This is a patient uh, that we have uh, treated uh, early gastric cancer uh, with a ESD. And uh, this is a surveillance endoscopy. So uh, we try to look into this uh, into detail. So um, there is a obviously um, dilated uh, microsurface pattern, but with a regular pattern. So this is a point withdrawal of an endoscope. I almost finished the endoscopic examination, but I found there is a irregularity uh, over the uh, posterior part uh, of the uh, uh, lower body of the stomach. And uh, when we look at it into more details with the uh, MBI with the uh, near focus function, we can see that in the center, there's an irregular microsurface pattern with a well demarcation line. So again, this is a, another lesion uh, that we recognize. So this is a surveillance endoscopy that I performed uh, two years after the initial uh, ESD, and it's not the same site. So this is a metachronous uh, early gastric cancer. So we treated this with another ESD. So um, I think this is a expert uh, uh, panel consensus uh, opinion uh, published in Digestive Endoscopy about uh, the uh, application of uh, MBI in diagnosing early gastric cancer. So. Uh, uh, the first statement is, is NBI useful in detection of early gastric cancer? So they don't find a good enough evidence and there's uh, no good uh, agreement between the experts. So if we are practicing endoscopy, still white light endoscopy is um, the method that we do uh, during uh, diagnostic endoscopy. So whether many find NBI can differentiate gastric neoplasia from uh, non-neoplasia, I think there are much more uh, agreement, strongly agree or agree 
it's uh, like uh, around 90 percent. So MBI uh, with magnifying endoscopy should be useful in differentiation. So whether magnifying MBI is useful in uh, determination of the extent of early gastric cancer, then still a lot of uh, strong agreement or agreement, almost 100 percent. So we will be able to uh, determine the extent and margin of the early gastric cancer. And whether magnifying MBI is useful in diagnosing the tumor death of the early gastric cancer, I think more uh, evidence and uh, more uh, publication is necessary to prove that. So uh, this is a final uh, picture showing uh, our, uh, the uh, Asia Novo uh, Bioimaging Imaging and Interventional Group, and uh, we are very uh, fortunate uh, to have uh, expert formation of this uh, group that we can promote uh, the uh, diagnosis and uh, detection of uh, early GI cancer uh, in Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Philip, for this very interesting um, presentation, especially the correlation between the histology, what uh, we see then endoscopically in the magnification was uh, outstanding, very interesting.